For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. John three sixteen and 17. These two simple verses are some of the most powerful words that have ever been recorded in human history. This opening, for God so loved the world. This is God's word to us. God is so full of love for you and I. Right now, if you doubt that God could ever love you, know this. He absolutely does love you. He knows you, all the good and the bad about you. And regardless of how you feel about yourself, regardless of how you feel like you've done in this life in regards to accomplishment or righteousness or goodness or loving God, God loves you dearly, regardless of what you think and regardless of what you've done. You might wonder, how is it that we know he loves us so dearly? Well, the next part of the passage tells us, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God's love for you is so intense, so powerful, that he sent his own son at great cost to himself so that he could first show us how much he loves us, and second, make a way for sin to be paid, and then finally, make a way for us to have a deep and meaningful relationship with God. This is why Jesus came right? He came to show us how much God loves us. He came to make a way for sin to be paid for and forgiven. And he made a way for us to have a deep and meaningful relationship with God. God paid a great cost in sending his own son. This reveals his love to us. And Jesus is infinitely valuable. He's literally infinitely valuable. There's no uh, amount of value you could put on him. God spared no cost in revealing his love to us. At the same time, Jesus is also fully God. Jesus is God coming into the world, God in the flesh coming into the world by his own choice to pay the greatest cost, laying down his life, taking on our sins, and feeling the wrath of God for sin. And for a moment, while Jesus was on the cross, he was separated from perfect relationship with God the Father as God's wrath poured out on him, the payment for our sins poured out on him so that we could be forgiven and loved. All of this reveals God's incredible love for us as humanity and you as an individual. If you've ever doubted God's love for you, John 3, 16 and 17, God's own word, his word to you reveals that he loved you so much. He was willing to pay any price himself so that you could be forgiven, so that you could know him, so that you could have life. The second part of our verse It says, or the second verse here, it says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. When it comes, uh, when Jesus comes, right? When we read the Bible and we hear God's words, when when you listen to Jesus, when you read the Bible, God reveals truth. This is what happens. Jesus came speaking the truth. This is one of the regular things he did in the Bible is he told us the truth. And when this happens, when Jesus speaks the truth, when we read the Bible, we see our sin, we see our brokenness, and we see our emptiness all on display. In order for Jesus to speak the truth, that means he tells us the truth. He tells us the truth in the sense that we're broken, we're sinful, we've rejected God. As we look to Jesus, it reveals sin. As we read the Bible, it reveals sin. That's a painful process. And because of this, naturally... When people first glance at Jesus or the Bible and they see it revealing their sin, they feel as though they're being condemned. They feel like they're being criticized. They feel like they're being told they're bad. They feel like uh, they're, they're, they're being condemned to hell. But this passage, John three seventeen, it tells us Jesus did not come to condemn. He does reveal our sin, but this isn't to condemn us. It's to speak truth to us in the hope that we realize we need a Savior and that Jesus is that Savior. Right? The whole idea, the whole reason the Bible reveals our sin is to show us what reality is. We are sinners and we need help. There's no amount of personal effort could get us, that could get us out of this hole. And so Jesus is saying, hey, you're a sinner. But the whole reason he tells us that is so that we look for grace. There are so many people, though, when they encounter Jesus, they encounter the Bible, they just assume it's all condemnation. They assume it's all just revealing sin. They don't get past this first revelation of truth. 
And if you never hear that you're a sinner, you don't look for a savior. And if you only ever hear you're a savior, or a, if you only ever hear you're a sinner, you might think that all Christianity is is condemnation. But that's not the truth. Don't mistake the truth of the Bible revealing our sin and brokenness as condemnation, but rather realize Jesus is trying to show you the truth that you've sinned and you need a savior. Jesus came into the world in order that the world, including you, might be saved through him. He came to seek and save the lost. Even though it's painful to hear that we're lost, even though it's painful to hear that we're broken, even though it's painful to hear that we're sinful, there's great hope in Christ. I might be asking, how is it that we receive this salvation? We receive it by believing in Jesus, who he is and what he said. All right, this means we believe he's our savior, that he came to save us. We also believe that he's our Lord, that we need to live our lives with him in charge, right? I don't make the main decisions in my life. I trust in Jesus. When I don't see or I don't know or, uh, what I should do, I look to Jesus. When what I believe and what Jesus believes come into you know, contention with one another, it means I go with Jesus. That was, that's what it means for him to be Lord of my life. It means I have my faith in Jesus. Even if I don't see something, even if I don't like something, even if I don't understand something, I trust Jesus over my own intuition. I believe he's God and I'm not, right? I put him in the place of glory and I put myself in a place of humility where I trust in God when I don't know where I should go. We receive the salvation through that kind of faith, believing in Jesus, making him Lord of our life. I'm gonna pray with you and I just encourage you to pray with me. If you are a Christian, just let this prayer remind you what it means to look to Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. And if you're not a Christian, I encourage you, pray this prayer with me. Reach out to us, right? We have we have a text line you can text that'll be in this video. We'd love to hear from you. If God's impacting you, if God's speaking to you, we'd love to hear and we'd love to connect with you. You know, I'd personally love to take you out to coffee, but let's pray together. And I'm uh, just going to ask that you pray with me. Jesus, we believe that you came into this world because of how deeply loving and good you are. God, you love us with such an amazing love that you willingly gave your life for us. Your blood was spilled in our place. You paid the price for our sins. Jesus, we believe that you've made a way for us to know God and live with you each and every day. I pray you give me faith. I pray you give those watching this faith to believe in you with a passion and a deep faith that transforms us into being more like you, deeply loving, sacrificial, and out to see others deeply blessed by the love of God. Lord, help us to live with you as the Lord of our lives, that your way would be our way, that your truth would be our truth, and that we would die to ourselves as we live in you. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Shut